Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Morning, Doc. Chester. Uh, hello, Matt. Hey, we've been waiting for you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, is there something wrong? Yes, sir, it's Mr. Doby. He's at the desk in the hotel there. He's real upset about something. He wants to see you. All right. Uh, you both wait here for me. Huh? I'll be right out. Yes, sir. All right. Marshal Dillon, I've sure been wanting to see you. Oh, what's the trouble, Mr. Dobie? You got a riot in here or something? There'll be a riot if you don't get them people out of here, Marshal. What people? The Daggetts, that's who. Well, who are the Daggetts? Big Dan Daggett, he calls himself. And he is big, too, Marshal. I never heard of him. He's only been in Dodge since yesterday. He's one of them mountain men from on west. He's a hunter or something. One of them real hairy fellas. Shouldn't be allowed around other white men. Oh, why not? What's he doing? He's sitting in my hotel. I let him in before he told me. Before he told you what? It's better you see for yourself, Marshal. Room's right at the top of the stairs there. Well, okay, Dobie, let's go. It's true, ain't it, Marshal, that I don't have to let nobody stay in my hotel I don't want. I guess so, if you got a good reason. <laughs> I got plenty of reasons. Three men have moved out already. Well, that sounds to me like he must have a box of rattlesnakes with him or something. Worse than that. This is room here. Now, this is a double room, isn't it? He needs it. He needs a whole doggone prairie. And that's where he's going. Now, you tell him, Marshal. Hello? I got the U.S. Marshal with me this time, Daggett. Oh, I'm Marshal Dillon, Daggett. Doby wanted me to come over here and meet you. Come on in. Well, you were right about his being big, Dobie. Man can't help being big. Hi, it's no offense. It's all right. There have been times I wished I was smaller. Not that I can't move as fast as any man. I'm easier to see is the only bad part. Tell me, Daggett, what's the trouble between you and Dobie here? It ain't my trouble, Marshal. All right, Dobby, I guess you better explain. There's nothing wrong here that I can see. It ain't him. It's his wife. What? He don't like my wife because she's an Indian, Marshal. That's a lie. What I care if she's an Indian? I don't understand. Where is she, Daggett? In another room. We'll bring her in here. Dobie, you know what I could do to you with the fingers of this one hand? Just the fingers. Don't forget, I got the marshal with me. I use the other hand on him. He starts ordering me around, too. Now, wait a minute. This kind of talk isn't doing any good. You're probably pretty good with that gun, marshal. But I've killed Mountain Lion with this knife. I ain't afraid of anything alive and not many ghosts. <laughs> ghosts? You even talk like a savage. All right, that's enough, Toby. Daggett, I didn't come here for a fight. I came to see what all the trouble's about. Now, if it's something that has to do with your wife, tell me. It has to do with Dobie, not with my wife. That's a lie. Dan? 
There she is. Look, Marshal. If it is me they are talking about, Dan, why didn't you call me? It's nothing to do with you. They were trying to order me around. At least he was Doby there. I only told you to get her in here so the Marshal could see her. Well, now he's seen her. Now, what's all the fuss about? You're playing dumb, ain't you, Daggett? Wait a minute. I don't think he is. Tell me something. Where did you and Ms. Daggett meet? Near Denver? Near Denver? Well, I'm a mountain man, Marshal. Never been on the prairie before. Now, what were you doing near Denver, Ms. Daggett? I was sent there four years ago to complete my education. My father was a chief, Marshal. A chief? What chief? His name was Yellow Horse. Yellow Horse? That's worse. That's the worst yet. I don't understand either of you men. What are you talking about? Well, Doby could tell that your wife was a Kiowa by the way she dressed. Well, she got to come from some tribe, don't she? Yeah, but being the daughter of Yellow Horse makes it even worse. Why? Two years ago, the Kiowas killed some 18 settlers on raids through the country near here. Yellow Horse led them until he was killed. You never told me that. Is that true? I only heard my father was dead. They told me nothing else. Well, what difference does it make anyway? You wasn't on them raids. The feeling's still high against Kiowas around here, Daggett, but you're right. She had nothing to do with them. A Kiowa's a Kiowa, and we won't stand for him and die. Oh, don't be a fool, Dobby. How can you blame her for what somebody else did? I blame that whole tribe, and especially her father. And I won't stand for her being here. She's probably as murdering as he was. Dobby. All right, hold it, Daggett. I, uh, I'd like to apologize to Ms. Daggett for... Bothering her. Apologize? Let's get out of here, Doby. Now. No. You come here to throw him out, and you're going to do it. Doby, I guess I'm a little like Dan Daggett here. I don't like taking orders very well either. All right, Marshal. If the law won't help me... The law won't help you. And don't you try anything else. Now, come on. We're getting out of here. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. 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 The miracle tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. L&M stands out for effective filtration. Filtration, filtration, filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip. L&M's got everything. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Justin? Well, uh, would you mind stopping in Mr. Jones's store here? It, it won't take but a minute or two. Oh? Uh-huh. You're going to spend your betting money on clothes again? Oh, no, sir. I mean, well, you see, Mr. Dillon, I, I need a little string tie. Uh, for Sundays, kind of. Oh. They don't cost more than a quarter. <laughs> All right, in that case, I'll go with you. There's Miss Kitty. Hi, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. The, the ties is hanging back over there, Mr. Dillon. I, I won't be long. All right, Chuck. Well, you're as bad as Chester, Kitty. <laughs> Always buying clothes. As Chester? 
Matt, if Chester's always buying clothes, how come ever since I've known him, he's worn that same pair of striped pants? <laughs> well, he's careful with them, I guess. <laughs> he never gets them torn. <laughs> You'd have to go to bed if he ever did. <laughs> Where's Mr. Jonas? Out back. He's showing Dan Daggett and his wife something. Oh, are they here? Sure. He introduced me to him. Big Dan Daggett. Like you said last night, Matt, he earned the name. He's a buffalo, that man. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. His wife's name's Rose. Said you couldn't pronounce it in Indian, so he made it English. She's a beautiful little thing. Ah, she's prettier than most women around here. Thanks. <sighs> oh, no, no, Kitty. No. I, I... <laughs> You're right. She really is. I guess Dan Daggett can't be all brute, or a girl like that would never have married him. Yeah, it's too bad Dobie over at the Dodge House can't see it your way, Kitty. No, Dobie's just not thinking very straight. Where's Jonas? Oh, uh, he's out back, Rodin. Oh, hello, Marshal. I didn't recognize you. Oh, here he comes. How are you like it, Rodin? Who's that, Matt? Uh, his name's Rodin. He works over at one of the stables. Oh, that explains why he's too poor ever to come into the Long Branch. <laughs> Jonas! Hey, Jonas! I'll be right with you, Rodin. Well, I'm in a hurry. It won't be but a minute. Well, I ain't waiting while you sell beads to her. Hey, wait a minute. What's she doing in here, anyway? Uh, you stay here, Kitty. Yeah. She's got as much right to be here as you have, Rodin. A Kiowa woman? You gone crazy? Well, no. Then throw her out of here, or I will. The woman is my wife, mister. Your wife? Your wife? You'll have to throw me out, too. What? Now, now look here. I, I didn't mean nothing. If you don't mean nothing, then don't talk. Sure, sure. What do I care? It's your business. I don't care. And even if you do care, you shouldn't say nothing about it out loud. Well, I ain't saying nothing. I gotta go now. I gotta go. Well, it looks like you handle that pretty well, Daggett. Can't fight every man in the world. No, I guess you can't. And I don't aim to. As long as they don't push me too far. Uh, is uh, Dobie leaving you alone? Oh, he's doing a lot of talking around. He's trying to stir up trouble. But before it comes, we'll probably be gone. Back to Colorado in the mountains. Oh? But Marshal... Uh, yeah? Uh, you come and see us sometime the next day or so. Rose would kind of like that. Well, thank you, Daggett. It'd be a pleasure. Where's Doc at this morning, Mr. Dillon? I've been up to his office twice, and he ain't there. Well, he was called out to the Duke place last night, Chester. Oh, somebody sick? Well, Doc doesn't get many social calls, you know. I was calling on him social. Huh? Oh, well, he'll appreciate that, I'm sure. Well, I think I'll go up to the Dodge house and make a call on Jim Doby. Oh. More trouble, Mr. Dillon? Well, there will be if somebody doesn't stop him. He's been talking to everybody who'll listen about Rose Daggett being the Yellow Horse's daughter. How they ought to run her out of town. <laughs> it's like he's looking for help, ain't it? Yeah. He ought to know better than that, a man like Doby. Well, that's what I'm going to try to explain to him, Chester. Marshal. Uh, hello, Daggett. Marshal. Uh, I'm kind of worried. Why, what's the matter? It's Rose. I can't find her nowhere. You can't find her? No. Well, maybe you and Chester will help look for her. I've been everywhere. Of course we'll help you. Now, where did you see her last? Oh, right in our room. Let me tell you. I woke up real early. Couldn't get back to sleep. I didn't want to bother Rose, so I, I got dressed. I went out in the street and I walked around... I wasn't gone more than one hour, Marshal. Shouldn't never have left her. Well, did you ask him at the hotel? Did anybody see her leave? Well, there wasn't nobody at the hotel. Not when I went out, not when I come back. Nobody could have seen her. Well, where could she have gone to that hour in the morning? She wouldn't have gone nowhere, Chester, not Rose. 
What I can't understand. Well, all right, let's start looking for her. Oh, come on. Uh, I guess we'll start with a hotel. Sure do want to thank you for this, Marshal. You too, Chester. Oh, uh, we'll find her, don't you? Or... Hey, there. Yeah, it sure is. Look, he's got somebody with him. That's Rose. That's Rose in that buggy. Rose? Rose, what are you doing there? Hello, Dan. Well, get down. Here, I'll take you. You... You will have to carry me, Dan. Where you been? What happened to your feet? Uh, Chester. What, Doc? Do me a favor. Take this buggy, will you? Sure, I will. Let me get down here. Ah, and you. You must be Daggett. Yeah. Uh, Take Rose into the marshal's office. She shouldn't be on the street out here. We'll go. Hmm. Uh, She told me about her husband, Matt, but she didn't tell me that he was that big. Come on, let's follow him. Yeah. Tell me, Doc, uh, what was Rose doing with you? I found her out in the prairie, about ten miles east of here. Well, what was she doing out there? Uh, I'll let her tell you that. Just you stay and sit right there, Rose. I am all right there. Oh, Doctor, this is my husband, Dan. Well, I kind of gathered that, Rose. Glad to know you, Dan. Yeah. Good thing you come along, Doc. You feel up to telling the whole story, Rose? Mm-hmm. I expect the marshal here will be interested, too. Yes, all right. Ah, good. And then I want you to come up to my office with me. Yes, Doctor. Has she been hurt, Doc? Go ahead, Rose. Tell me. Well, early this morning, I, I woke up when somebody tied a bandana over my face. Never should have left you alone. Oh, that is foolish talk, Dan. It was not your fault. Go on, Rose. Well, it was two men. They never said a word the whole time. They never talked once. But they carried me out the back way. And then they tied me onto a horse and led it way out into the prairie. They finally stopped and took me off and untied me. And then they took my shoes away. And they rode off. Finally got the blindfold off. And I, I walked and walked till I saw... The doctor's buggy coming. I could not have walked much farther. Rose. Rose. Now, wait a minute, Dan. Rose, you never saw these men. No. And you never heard their voices. No, but but I heard them walk. Everybody has a different walk. Or did you recognize either of them from hearing them walk? No. It was not Dobie or that man in the store. We'll find them, Rose. We'll sit on the street and we'll listen until we find them. When we do, I'll cut them. I'll cut them awful before I kill them. No, Daggett. You let Rose find them if she can, and then I'll take them. They're mine, Marshal. They're just as much mine as Rose is mine. I wouldn't let nobody else in the world touch them but me. That'd be murder. Is that what you call it? Rose, Doc wants you in his office. You go along now. And then we'll start listening. It's as good a way to hunt as any. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. Let's you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos, light and mild. Every way, L and M is best, stands out from all the rest. They've got 
everything. King size or regular, L&M is America's best filter-tipped cigarette. For the next few days, the Daggetts took up their post on the boardwalk halfway down Front Street. Rose would sit there for hours, her head down, her eyes half closed, listening to the footsteps of hundreds of men as they passed. And Daggett would stand at her side, his bowie knife in his belt, waiting with animal patience for a sign from his wife. But it didn't come. And I began to hope that for his sake, the kidnappers had left the country and nothing had happened. And then the morning of the third day, Chester and I were loafing around on the porch of the general store. Well, where's the daggets this morning, Mr. Dillon? They ain't over there where they usually are. Well, I guess they haven't started yet, Chester. I swear every man in Dodge must have walked past there by now. All but two, maybe. Mm. Morning, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Mr. Doby. Doby. I'm looking for the Daggetts, Marshal. You seen them? No, I haven't, Doby. But Dan Daggett isn't taking things as easy as he was. If I were you, I'd stop looking right now. Doc told me what happened, Marshal. Doc did, huh? Well, he knew nobody else would. So he took it on himself. What for? For my own good, the way he put it. Well, did it do you any good? Made me mad. Mad at myself, mostly. Marshal, I... I've been a fool. Hey, Mr. Dillon, there's Rose now. Huh? In, in the street there. She's got a shotgun. Hey, what's she doing? Looks like she's following those two men. Oh, she sure is. Come on. She stopped them. She's got them turned around. See, so she's gonna shoot them. Oh, they ain't making any move. How do you know it was us? What if it was? I guess you ain't learned nothing. Maybe we'll have to do it again. Don't shoot, Rose. I'll take him. All right. Give me the shotgun, Rose. It is empty, Marshal. Why did you do it? I'd have arrested them. Dan would have found a way to kill them, even if you had. They're dead, Mr. Dillon. Both of them. Who are they, Chester? I never saw them before in my life. A couple of strangers, I guess. Rose! I'll go get somebody to give me a hand. Rose! Was that them? Why didn't you tell me? What'd you run away for? Why'd you kill them? They are the ones, Dan. How'd you know? Where did you spot them? They walked past our table while we were eating breakfast. And you said you was going up to our room. I did go. Long enough to get the shotgun. Why didn't you tell me? Why'd you have to kill him? I could not see you hang for what happened to me, Dan. I'd have gladly hung for it. Anything's better than your going to jail. I will not mind, Dan. It'll kill you. I won't let it happen. It ain't right. Don't try to take her, Marshal. Don't you try. I know how you feel, Daggett. But I've got to arrest her. Rose has got to stand trial. What'll they do to her? Well, I don't think there's a judge in Kansas who'd convict Rose for what she did under the circumstances. Marshal Dillon. Yes, what, Doby? I got to say something, Marshal. All right, say it. Them two men she killed. I just looked at them, and I, I don't know who they are. But I've seen them. So? I seen them the other day when I was talking the way I was. They heard me. They was listening. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I just had to tell you that. I... I don't feel very proud. You're the one that ought to go to jail, Dobie. 
That's what I'm trying to tell you, Marshal. It's mostly my fault. What happened to her and this killing and all. Well, you've learned something now, anyway. Only there's nothing I can do about it. Too late, I... I feel like hiding. Mr. Doby. Yes, ma'am? Would you walk back to the hotel with me and my husband? Thank you. I'd be proud to. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Today, there's one filter cigarette that stands out from all the rest. L and M stands out for flavor, for effective filtration, for highest quality tobacco. L and M's got everything. That's what makes it America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L and M's king size or regular. I know you'll go for them. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Lillian Bayef, Clayton Post, and Joe Duval. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield, smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Listen to Chesterfield's two great radio shows every week. The Perry Como Show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And Dragnet, Tuesday nights on another network. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filter. This is the CBS Radio Network.